Sasrikal everyone. Um, I'm Namita Jaspal. Today is Bandi Chor Divas and um, I feel really honored and privileged to be able to share with you a very sacred professional experience related to Bandi Chor Divas. In 2011, I was introduced to Chola Sahib Ji of Sixth Guru Sri Hargobind Sahib Ji, uh, which was worn by him when he rescued 52 kings and princes from the prison of Gwalior. I was introduced to Chola Sahib Ji by Mrs. Rashpal Kaur, uh, who hails from village Gudani Kala and is uh, now settled in Washington, US since uh, many de decades. Now, the Chola Sahib Ji and um, a poti and a few other things were gifted to the villages of uh, Gudani Kala by Sri Hargobind Sahib Ji uh, as a reward for their services. And um, they are very much attached, everybody in the village and community members are attached to uh, Chola Sahib Ji and other uh, gifts from Guruji. And uh, they were all worried about the deteriorating condition of Chola Sahib Ji especially. And they um, got in touch with me after exploring all other options in India for preserving Chola Sahib Ji. Uh, the main uh, problem was not just aging, deterioration due to aging, but uh, a huge fungal colony on one of the arms of uh, Chola Sahib Ji, which was very visible, it's, it was huge. It was not easy for the community members to uh, decide upon opening up Ch Chola Sahib Ji for treatment, but uh, this was the first time that uh, the profession, the scientific profession of uh, conservation was trusted upon. And as you'll see by the end of uh, this discussion, this uh, slideshow, uh, that it helped. And after, now after, if you go there after 10 years, uh, it's nine years, it's going to be 10 years, uh, that uh, it is much in much better condition than when we saw uh, in 2011. Um, having another look at the display case, we realize that uh, the main problem with any object on display case is the stagnant environment, which helps uh, the microorganisms grow inside. Now, secondly, since the display cases are not perfectly sealed, the dirt and dust which um, comes in through these uh, leakage points uh, cannot move out and they settle on the objects. Here the, it has settled on the Chola Sahib Ji. So this dust and dirt is extremely damaging because it is hygroscopic, it absorbs moisture, becomes sticky and acts as a substrate for the microorganisms to grow upon. Since not all community members were uh, sure about moving, uh, moving uh, Chola Sahib Ji uh, to a proper conservation lab. Uh, Chola Sahib Ji had to be treated uh, at Gurdwara Sahib Ji itself in front of Sangat and everybody at Gurdwara Sahib Ji. Uh, here you can see Guru Granth Sahib Ji uh, seated and um, uh, the portion from where the picture is taken is uh, where Sangat sits. And on the right side, you can see, I'll just take a pen and you can see this display case. Um, this is the display case, uh, the original uh, display case when we went there. And here, this little framed uh, sheet, it is a leaflet uh, giving all the information about uh, Chola Sahib Ji, like its length and uh, the measurements and all. So uh, that I'll be sharing with you in further slides. This is a makeshift arrangement. You can see on the other side of this partition is uh, Guru Granth Sahib Ji and uh, the Sanghas used to sit there. But on this side is um, uh, our uh, um, team, 
and we are treating Jola Sahib Ji. And since the picture is taken from the entrance, so the Sangat would first uh, have darshan of Jola Sahib Ji and then go to the next area. Here you can see that uh, Chola Sahib Ji was actually pinned on a board which was covered with a velvet, uh, purple velvet. And uh, the pins used were the thumb pins that we use on notice board of uh, our <coughs> educational institutes or uh, other organizations. And uh, I'll just uh, try to, yeah, this, these are the pins and they were all rusted. They were taken out with the help of this tool and this soft brush is used, was used to remove the dust, loose dust from Chola Sahib Ji. And uh, here you can see this is actually the kinari, the golden kinari was used to outline uh, Chola Sahib Ji because uh, the fabric of Chola Sahib Ji wasn't uh, um, intact uh, throughout, means there were points where the edges were not clear, so to just mark it properly, it was um, uh, a kina kinari was used and pinned uh, along with the edges of uh, the outline of the Chola Sahib Ji. For all the 15 to 20 days that we worked in Gudani Kala at Gurdwara, Gurdwara Sahib Ji, Rather, there are two Gurdwara Sahib Ji, one is Chola Sahib Ji, and we worked also on Nimsar Sahib, where we have a Ban Sahib of uh, Guru Har Gobind Sahib Ji. So, uh, 15 days at uh, Chola Sahib Ji Gurdwara, and uh, uh, last five days we were uh, working on both the Gurdwara Sahib Ji. So, uh, for all these 20 days, uh, uh, the Seva Dajis were accompanying us and would help us with all our needs. Um, we used to have langar just outside this room because this, it was just uh, next to the lang langar hall. And uh, at times, it used, we used to get tired and all in the evening. Sangat would also just uh, pass on some biscuits or something so that our just sweets so that we can put them in our mouth and just uh, uh, carry on with our work. And, uh, but of course, uh, we were not uh, eating uh, while working and uh, we would just come to know about all these uh, gifts from the Sangat uh, at the end of uh, the day when we were just uh, picking up our stuff. Um, This is the summary of uh, what all we do. First of all, uh, before we start any treatment, the first thing is that we try to understand the history, or you can say the case study, uh, case history of uh, the object. And here it is, Chola Sahib Ji. Now this is called anamnesis. And um, then we try to see the present condition of uh, uh, the object, the, so this is called condition assessment. In this, we also um, have to do some analysis. Uh, we, I'll talk about it in further slides. And then after uh, doing the condition assessment and diagnosis with analysis and all, we prepare a conservation plan, which we follow in our actual curative and preventive conservation processes. But at times in our field, it is like it is seen that uh, many a times, rather a lot many times, that uh, when we are, we have a conservation plan in place, but when we are treating the object, like if we are cleaning something, some hard object, and we come to know after cleaning that, oh, there's something beneath the layers of grime. So uh, some um, additional problems come pop up uh, during the conservation process. So uh, this is the basic summary of what all we do. We d study the history, we study the present condition, we do some analysis, scientific analysis and all, then we prepare a conservation plan and then we do the actual curative and preventive conservation. The deterioration problems that we saw in Chola Sahib Ji were um, soiling and accretions, uh, stress due to vertical display, and strain and rust uh, stains due to iron thumb pins use. So iron thumb pins were causing strain 
in the fabric as well as some stains uh, which were due to the rusting and most almost all the thumb pins were badly rusted then the wooden support is also a very damaging factor because uh, wood is always um, emitting uh, some uh, um, organic gases which are harmful and acidic also. The previous restoration attempts, these were huge problem. Like when we opened it up, we saw so many stitches because uh, the lighter weave in the striped pattern of Chola Saib Ji was all um, gone. It was uh, lost, especially in the upper area, not in the skirt area, but in the upper back area. So the thicker uh, stripes which were left, they were uh, taken together and soon. And then not natural aging is always there in any fabric or anything, any material. Now analysis, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we do different types of analysis here since it is not, we are not treating Chola Sahibji in a proper lab or we are not um, taking any sample to the lab. Uh, mainly it was visual inspection and we could find so many things with simple visual inspection through magnifying glasses and all. And uh, not just magnifying glasses, we also did some microscopic e examination. We did solubility tests also. This was possible just because when we were shifting Chola Sahibji uh, from the display case, we found some fab uh, fibers had fallen off. Since it is very fragile now, it's break the fibers are breaking off. That's why the condition you'll see later in more pictures. I have so many pictures, but I'll be sharing a few because we don't, uh, don't have that much of time. So, uh, so with those fallen fibers, we could do a little bit of solubility test and which was good and it was like magic because whatever little we had it gave such fine results uh, that any fabric person scientist or a conservator would be happy to see otherwise sometimes we have to take many slides we have to do uh, many um, tests to come to some conclusion so we did visual inspection which was through simple uh, on, uh, naked eye and uh, um, magnifying glasses, then with microscope and also the solubility tests. Now with visual inspection you could see many things. Uh, here you see, I'll just mark with a pen. Um, you can see this, uh, no, you can see this round patch. Half of it is on the arm of Chola Sabji and half of it is uh, on the velvet uh, on the board on which it is pinned. So this is a fungal colony. It was growing larger and larger. And that was, I think, the main concern of everybody in the community who was uh, who used to see Chola Sahibji frequently. And you can see here in this picture, since the, these lighter stripes are all gone, they are no, no more there. These, these, the fibers were from these areas that we could take out for um, uh, solubility tests. So since these are all gone, they just took uh, all of these thicker uh, stripes and they had sewn them together so that um, they remain in place and they are not lost. But this was again damaging because you're using a lot of needle and it is further weakening the fabric. Now here, uh, these pictures are showing that canary that I was talking about and these are the pins and uh, we removed the canary and we, you can see that uh, the, the edges are, of the fabric are not in that good sound condition. And this is a close up of the same picture that I had shown you earlier. You can see these stitches. So these uh, thicker stripes were sewn together. And these are the fibers you can see that some of them had fallen and we could take them for. Uh... So here, this is the microscopic observation with the uh, magnifying glass also. You can see that this is, both of these are plain weaves. But uh, the stripe is because uh, the darker area is actually a thicker weave. And uh, this lighter area is a, a loose weave, loose plain weave. So uh, this is something very basic about the weave pattern of Chola Sahibji. 
Then the fallen fibers that we had taken, we did the solubility test and uh, which was followed by some microscopic analysis because with the solubility test, we could find out that it should be silk and uh, uh, loosened fibers. Um, we made some slides and which confirmed the silk fiber. Uh, because silk fiber, we see that one fiber is composed of two filaments. You can see a little joint over here and uh, here. In the one single slide, you had both the things. Here, the two filaments are joined and here they are opening up. Because of the solubility, we were dissolving them. We were using some solubility tests. So, uh, and another thing, which I think is in the next it has a triangular, it's very clear in this slide that a triangular rod-like thing that is silk. So that the shape is confirming again the presence of silk fibers. And, uh, this is now the curative conservation process. The first step, the first thing that we did for, and it took us three days we, because everybody was scared, including ourselves. We were also because it, it was a huge responsibility. And uh, uh, everybody was watching and everybody was curious. So what we saw, first of all, of course, we sterilized this uh, fungal patch. And what we did was um, that we took uh, sponges made of natural rubber. They are especially for conservation purpose. And we had cut them into smaller pieces. They are using these small pieces. Maybe I've seen and I've shown them in the next slide. This piece you can see. I'll just take white. And, um, I hope the white pen works. This thing, yeah. So this is the sponge. It's a rectangular. Um, uh, piece of sponge of uh, size of our palm of hand but we cut it into smaller pieces and we just touch it on the surface and it attracts the dirt it is dust attracting sponge dirt attracting sponge so the, all the loose dirt comes on to that sponge it is taken up by slightly you can't say wet but you can feel it's not totally dry it's a natural rubber thing this is uh, uh, how we have, I'll have to take a different pen now. So these are the clean sponges and this is how they get after they absorb the dirt. So for three days we uh, cleaned each and every portion of Chola Sahib Ji very carefully. We took out all the loose dirt with the help of these dust attra attracting sponges. But there was a lot of um, uh, accu uh, accumulated dirt and um, other accumulation uh, accretions in the Chola Sahib Ji, and there were stains also. So we had to decide upon wet cleaning. But wet cleaning is generally with saponifying agents, uh, which su which are suitable for the different fabrics. But here we decided upon not using any saponifying agent or any other solvent or anything. We just use deionized water just to take out, bring out the uh, dirt which was, uh, um, uh, which was deep inside the fabric, which was stuck deep inside the fabric, just to loosen it and to bring it out. So in the wet leaning, you just see uh, we are not using any saponifying agent because uh, uh, that way it would have um, um, made it uh, like we had to then rinse it many times so that there is no residue left which can be damaging. Any um, saponifying agent which is left in the fabric would, be, would have been damaging. So we didn't want many rinses. It was in a very fragile condition, Chola Sahib Ji. So we just did it with deionized water. You can see the cans here and you can see the color of uh, deionized water after um, and the dirt has come out of uh, Chola Sahib Ji. Here, you can see the dry cleaning results. The sponges have taken out so much of dirt and then the water, how it has turned totally almost black. And the Sangat was 
we couldn't get more pictures because as soon as we were cleaning and before we realized that we have to take pictures, the sponges were gone. Uh, Sangat was so, uh, they had such a faith that they wanted to take the dirt of from Chola Sahibji as a sacred dirt to their home. And they also took, there were so many cans, uh, nearly 10 cans that uh, we, and that came out uh, and um, none was left for us. So I just took a picture for the, of the last uh, can uh, so that I can compare for the record. So here you can see that the Chola Sahibji, which was looking so fragile, we were so scared of touching initially, has got gained so much of strength. Just by removing the dirt, which is binding, which is sticky, which is causing microorganisms also to um, get attached and grow. Now, after cleaning, you can see this. These stripes were uh, these uh, taniya. They were all so uh, um, together, and they were looking so thin. But after cleaning and after flattening them, just in the wet, uh, semi-wet condition, they were looking, and we could see the design of uh, the taniya at the end. They have a little um, a weave pattern, a floral kind of weave pattern. It's not embroidery but we fatten. I think I have a close-up also, but it's not in this slideshow. So here we had opened the whole Chola Sahibji, the whole Ghera, and we found there were so many damages. And it is, this is the information um, uh, that was there when we went there. And uh, according to this also, it is not 52 Kaliya. They're saying 52 Rajas were freed, but uh, 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 the Kaliya, they are saying 18, and the Taniya are 14 big and small 6, and they are counting them as 28 because um, they say each Raj, uh, uh, each Tani was hel uh, uh, held by two Rajas because they were broader, these were, and uh, these were smaller, so they were, each uh, Tani was uh, big, uh, uh, held by one Raja only and so total they count it as 52 so uh, as they call it 52 Kaliya in the heading they have written 52 Kaliya but actually they are saying again here they are not 52 Kaliya they are 18 Kaliya and I think 20 because we also counted them and as you might have seen in the earlier slide so I'll take it again, but uh, because of the J, the pocket is there, and there was a little confusion about that. So it is either 18 or 20, but not 52. And we didn't stretch much. We didn't stretch the fabric much to uh, find out its actual circumference or anything. Uh, though we took, we have some measurements, but we, we didn't stretch it m much uh, uh, because we knew that uh, we can't uh, um, uh, handle Chola Sahibji uh, carelessly. So uh, these, these are the dimensions this, which were given earlier. So we have our own dimensions also. Now the next step in conservation was to remove the old restoration attempts because they were not in proper shape. Uh, they were just uh, casually uh, tying the uh, stripes uh, that were gone loose and uh, they were doing more harm than uh, any help in preservation. So these were carefully, very carefully taken out, these zones, uh, stitches of the old restoration and uh, the uh, stripes were aligned properly so whatever gaps were there they were left like that and we prepared an adhesive uh, film uh, which is reversible and very light it is a weak adhesive uh, and intentionally so because um, it's a law of physics that we when you join two things uh, and with time of course they separate and uh, in that process of separation or loosening, the weaker thing is uh, sacrificed. So the original, that means the Chola Sahibji fabric should be stronger 
than the adhesive. So adhesive is taken very weak, reversible, which can very easily removed if required. And uh, this is done. I can't talk the technicalities of this right here, but we use this. We made a very thin film. Lean. This is you, you can see. This is the crippling silk with adhesive film, and uh, we had put. We are all now. You can see. Um, I'll take the pen. They're all in line, and we haven't filled or tried to uh, bring them together and tie them. So they are in their own position and leaving the gaps as such. And we had put this very thin, uh, reversible silk adhesive film um, on top of it, and it would adhere. You can see, I think it is a can see now the back of the Chola Sadhguruji, which was earlier, it was all tied up at one point, is now in proper shape. And so this is the condition after treatment. See the comparison, you can see, uh, and you can see how it is falling uh, under its own weight. And this back, you can see a little portion where the, but since it is covered by it, the, uh, the, uh, the stripes on the back were all tied uh, and seen together. And this is all dirt accumulated, which is causing so much of um, damage and this um, fungal colony. And so you can see how we have removed all the damaging uh, um, accumulations, damaging agents, deteriorating agents from Chola Sahib Ji, and it has gained, just by removing the deteriorating agents, it has gained so much of health. Here you can't even see the Taniya. They are so uh, gone together, like, and they were so thin, frail, and you can see a little end tips of them over here. And here you can see them in their full width. And... Uh, uh, Chola Sahib Ji, uh, the Chola Sahib Ji that was born by Sri Hargur Bin Sahib Ji at, uh, Bandi Chor, on Bandi Chor Divas to free 52 kings from the prison of Gwalior. Thank you so much for giving time and patiently listening to this um, story of ours, the, prof uh, the sacred professional experience. Thank you so much. Sashrika.